I will logically continue the statements made by Anna Sergeyevna. And I would like to present the results of some works on comparing histological scanners to which we had access. The purpose of my presentation is not to advertise or discredit any manufacturer, but to develop their criteria uh, as to uh, uh, histological scanners on the market, uh, how they are differ, because quite uh, they are different. Uh, quite often, questions are asked uh, to the uh, by the developing laboratories who would also like to use that uh, new equipment. They are trying to understand what decision will be more convenient for them, and as a result, they don't know what uh, criteria should be used to choose uh, the scanners. You shouldn't be afraid. These are just uh, basic optical schemes uh, of the well-known devices. To the left, that is a classical optical scheme of a binocular microscope with, each, uh, with which each pathologist has worked. The purpose of the slide is to visualize that optics and uh, the essence of each optical device is quite complicated not only from the viewpoint of selecting each optical element, but also in respect of the interaction, the system that needs precision calculations. And uh, usual pathologies in routine work is uh, using the lens as a certain a constant or a certain landmark using which he can moderate the picture that he sees in the oculus, in the lens. With a complication of the optical systems, the lens as a part of the optical system is a place a lower role. For instance, in the middle, you can see a scheme of a trinocular microscope with a camera and to the right. Uh, that is a large monster that is not a scanner. Uh, this is a common analytical microscope with a scheme of uh, uh, reverse control for control the lighting of the specimen uh, automatically and not by uh, as it is commonly done by a doctor. In the right hand scheme, please try to find the lens. It uh, plays a lesser role in that case, and the optical uh, just uh, part is important uh, from the viewpoint of the final result, uh, the picture that you would see at the output. The sense is not uh, uh, in the following, uh, using uh, the, uh, choosing the scanner, you shouldn't get inside uh, it to assess the characteristics because you won't understand the, and the uh, availability of large super lenses uh, that are advertised uh, will also not help you. The only thing that we can look at choosing or assessing a certain device, that is the final result. If we speak about the assessment criteria, the most important criteria that is color transmission, resolution, and the size of the file. The light transmission is color transmission is most critical from the pathologist's viewpoint because he is looking at many slides with his own eyes. Uh, the, these are the slides with which he works and uh, which he uses when he, uh, he assesses the immune uh, histochemical uh, scale uh, dying and other factors. For instance, will you find this in the field in this picture? It is clear that uh, uh, color transmission is also important, but resolution is no less important. That is an objective criteria, but it uh, controls the size of the uh, stored uh, files. 
of the saved file. The size is not a criteria which the pathology should take care of, but that is an important and critical criteria from the viewpoint of the uh, expensive systems of storage and access, in which sooner or later, with which sooner or later, an institution would have a problem, and it also has uh, to be borne in mind because that will control the convenience of your work with the flow of digital information. This slide shows the results of scanning using two microscopes. I didn't give the type of the microscope on purpose. You can see that the same lens with a magnification 20x will give different resolution and different quality of the picture. I don't know whether you can see it well uh, uh, when you have connected uh, us from your devices, but on a good monitor, the difference is quite well seen. Uh, first, uh, the comparison of the uh, when comparing the microscope we saw that uh, scanning under similar conditions uh, using similar lenses gives uh, great differences in the results. And we even cannot assess further the results that have been obtained. And so we tried to scan using magnification 40, and we received the result uh, that was more or less comparable comparable in terms of resolution, comparable in terms of the quality of the picture, image, and uh, comparable in terms of size. Thus further, all the comparisons are based on, on the opposite uh, scanning conditions, but each person can draw his own conditions, uh, conclusions. I have just shown these uh, images so that uh, you would have your own opinion. I was asking the pathologists, and some of them uh, 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 preferred uh, the uh, color pattern of the left slide, and uh, others uh, preferred the right slide, uh, thinking that it was more uh, natural, and the middle one is uh, the same as the right one with lower resolution. Thus, let us not look ahead. The most important thing that we should indicate, most of modern scanning systems can they use quite well standardized and high quality uh, slides. Uh, towards this end, uh, maybe it's not really pointless to compare them between themselves, only maybe let alone the uh, color of the transmission. That's why Lena um, emphasized the issue related to sampling. Uh, if uh, the substance is uh, well sliced and closed and covered uh, and you use the right size of the glass for the scanners. Scanners don't have any problems with providing us with the image which could be analyzed at first glance even by the pathologist. And it's very, very convenient for pathologist in the same way as when it's through the microscope. But mindful of some artifacts, uh, uh, the uh, drugs, uh, the quality of which is sufficient to make a diagnosis so we don't have to waste our chemical agents and resources to revalidate it. But scanning is the stage uh, which can aggravate the problems uh, which AVDG already has. So we should identify the algorithm of selection of objects and the ways of focusing. Uh, when we look at the color transmission and resolution, then we look at the way the scanner copes with the problems. Uh, uh, it's related to software, of course. It's the way, the extent to which machine logic is uh, comparable to to the logic of the pathologists associated with the same folds. It's more uh, 
correct and more convenient for a machine and concentrates on clear-cut, long, uh, lengthy margins. On the right-hand side, uh, the scanner is focusing on the fold, uh, which is quite uh, bright and clearly delineated object, whereas on the left-hand side image, uh, the scanner, notwithstanding the fact that the fold is there, uh, it focuses on the tissue. Another implication or nuance which is important here is the way uh, the uh, suture, uh, the firm wire is done. World slide image is a set of photographs of different fields of vision uh, and machine uh, does the firm wire of them into single image. At this stage, any scanner has got some leeway, some freedom. Uh, they are able to identify the plane of focusing, which will correlate to more uh, clear uh, cut and excise local image uh, so they can firm wire them in such a way that they will level up the sample, the specimen with uh, uh, heterogeneous uh, thickness. On the other hand, uh, it's a good benefit in that. On the right-hand side of the slide, you can see in a much better way uh, margins and borders of tissues vis-a-vis -vis the left one. It's easier to analyze it using your eyes in your routine work. It looks much better. You'll agree with that, I think. On the other hand, it's uh, uh, objectively, impartially, a thin uh, cut of the slice, a thin edge of the slice, and pathologists uh, uh, can be quite sure that it is possible to analyze the right zone, which he would not look at through the microscope just because it's the zone of low quality. And uh, we should think about it. And we should figure out ours, for ourselves uh, which of those variants would be more appropriate for our work. And it's common knowledge that apart from those folds and heterogeneous uh, thickness, there are different artifacts. Uh, and impurities which are not seen at the micro level, you cannot get rid of them no matter how well you clean up the glass before you put it into the scanner. But it's the decision you should make ourselves for yourselves. On the one hand, more clear cut and more bright a picture could be better for recognition. On the other hand, to assess PDL1 or HER2, uh, assessment of those stains. It's very important to be very precise in uh, assessing how full uh, the staining is for this membrane specimen. specimen. Artificially processed image uh, could entail uh, errors in diagnostics. And I reiterate each and every scanner is uh, capable of working uh, with ideal or notionally ideal specimen. But what's to be done when it's small volume biopsies, uh, when the volume of the material does make it possible uh, to reprocess the tracer at a higher level? But uh, having said that, Anyways, scans shown here, neither one of them uh, could not uh, do everything correctly in automatic mode. Here is the procedure of uh, manual focusing for each scanner because uh, for machine it's very difficult to focus on small sized objects uh, of heterogeneous thickness. Uh, so they fail to do that. That's the way it looks when it's, mag like when it's magnified. That's a close-up. 
Uh, on the right hand side, you can see this is a small crumpled biotite. It's uh, artificially uh, form wide in such a way that it looks uh, contrasting and distinctive and clear cut. It's CD30 in this case, so you'll be able, uh, using your own eyesight, to opt for this or that image which is more appealing to you. We plan to extend and expand this work because it has proven to be quite fruitful and very interesting. We should be aware of all the opportunities which are around related to that. For those colleagues who are interested in development of digital pathologies on the grounds of their institutions, I can suggest the following uh, recommendations, which are very, very uh, simple. Identify several tracer drugs of good quality to assess the uh, way color is conveyed uh, and uh, the resolution is good and uh, traces with artifact and their fabrication and uh, uh, to see and to analyze how scanners are focusing on them, how firm wire is done, uh, the convenience of manual fine tuning uh, if biotests have got small size, the uh, speed of scanning, the sounds, everything else is optional. Uh, it's related to user characteristics. Uh, I've got two more minutes and I would like to say a few more words. Apart from full automated systems of scanning in the contemporary market, uh, there is a number of very interesting systems which, uh, in point of fact, are used by the microscope itself and the manual uh, ability of pathologists uh, to create the uh, trace and drugs and world slide image. It's a software which uh, form wires uh, image from the camera, from the microscope, such as microvisioner, X-Wall, quite affordable solutions, uh, which when it comes to the final quality, uh, no inferior to the images we get from very expensive super scanners. Uh, uh, because all those settings, focusing, uh, illumination is done by doctor himself. Uh, this is very uh, positive because it opens up broad opportunities for um, remote and small labs to come up with digital copies of uh, uh, tracer drugs, uh, refer them to consulting, they should uh, come along with the contemporary times, they could get uh, the consultations uh, from other regional centers as well from uh, specialists. Uh, so I think digital, that digital pathology is getting more and more affordable and available and open, and i pretty much hopeful that our colleagues will find lots of uh, advantages in it.